So what happened when you mix tapes and technology? Well, there you go. You got one of the best idea for 2023 on the Canadian market. Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour. My name is Mike Yehu and I'm the founder of Dividend Stocks Rock and I also host this YouTube channel to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Today, we're going to talk about my latest addition to my portfolio, CCL Industries. So the ticker is ccl.b.to or .a if you think that's your management, but if you do not care about voting rights and you want to have some volume on your stock, well, you want to buy ccl.b.to. Um, up front, if you take a look at uh, Yahoo Finance or using some website to know which sector is it, it's kind of like counterintuitive because on some sites it will show as material, some other sites will show as consumer cyclical or consumer discretionary. And I could also even argue that it could be maybe one third industrial or one third consumer staples. Stay with me, I'm gonna do a full review of CCL Industries. I'm gonna explain you what I like about it, its dividend triangle, and obviously we're gonna take a look at what are the growth perspective at the end of this video. So first things first, let's start with the dividend triangle. So the dividend triangle, as you can see, the stock price has been pretty much the same for the past five years. So not super exciting, a company that is flying under the radar. Uh, a lot of people may say, well, uh, where's the interest here? Well, here's the thing. CCL has been increasing its dividend for the past 21 years. And as you can see, in 21, 22, and 23, the dividend increases are quite significant. The company has a kind of like a mix of like organic growth and growth by acquisition. You can see that they had the rough patch during 2019, 2020, but then since 21, the revenue is going up, the earnings going up, and the dividend is the dividend growth is accelerating. So when I look at a dividend triangle profile like this, I'm thinking, well, there's something brewing under the hood. There's probably a lot more stuff that is will be interesting going forward and I should look at what CCL Industries does. But before that, I just want to invite you to download the DSR Rockstar list. You can download it in an, it's an Excel spreadsheet. The link is in the description below and CCL Industries is part of that Rockstar list. So what's the Rockstar list? Well, quite simple. We use the DSR stock screener where we track over 1,100 stocks and then we look at companies that has a strong dividend triangle such as this one. We combine a bunch of metrics, we put that into an Excel spreadsheet and this list is being updated monthly, all of that for free. So you put that your email address, we're gonna send it to you and every single month you're gonna get a fresh list of new ideas Canadian and US stocks, which is pretty cool because then you cover all sectors, all markets, and you can invest with more conviction. So now back to CCL Industries. Well, what does it do? What it means like tapes and technologies, right? So CCL operates under four different business segments. The two largest ones are CCL Industries and Avery. Both of them has world largest position in their uh, niche. So for CCL, we're talking about packaging, we're talking about tubes and containers. So everything that has to do with wrapping or like those stickers and labels. For Avery, well, it's the world largest suppliers of labels. So for you, I'm pretty sure that if you've worked in an office, you have seen those little every stickers so you have like all kinds of stickers and labels that they are making they're making like great solutions for small and medium businesses where they can print and become autonomous with their labeling thing then you have checkpoint well checkpoint is quite interesting because now this is where they mix technology and and, and labels and, and and stuff like that so like what they do is they include RF and RF ideas. So for scanners and stuff like that, like detection. So to when you enter into a store where if you get out and you're trying to steal something, it's gonna it's gonna beep up. Uh, and they're also working on other technology. You can think about like those smart stores that Alimentation Couchetard or Amazon wants to create. Well, this is the type of technology Checkpoint can provide to them. And finally, Innovia is actually making dollar bills. So which is pretty cool, like all the special 
liquidity into uh, polymer banknotes. Um, there are like some special uh, labels and packaging as well. So they're really like the high end part of it. So what is great about this type of business model is they are able to grow organically um, throughout like all the phases because they're selling a lot of repetitive purchases. So as long as people buy stuff. So this is why some companies, uh, some, some financial information will put them as a consumer cyclical because it goes also with a lot of like how much consumers are going to spend. But it's also industrial because we're mixing technology and we need like manufacturing plants to be able to create those labels, to create those packaging solutions. There's tools and containers and so on. Uh, finally, it is also listed as a material stock. Why? Well, because they're highly dependent. Their entire business model depends on the cost of their materials. So they need to have like polymer and other types of plastics at a cheap price and whenever the oil price goes up well it's a little bit harder for them to manage so this is why because of their business models is like quite dependent on specific materials they could also be qualified there so the important part here is not to know if CCL is a consumer discretionary staple in an industrial or a material stock. It's to understand to understand the business model and what will impact them. So the economy will impact them, obviously. And the other thing it, that will impact them is also the cost of materials. So you can say it's half consumer, half materials, and there you go. You get something that makes sense. Hey guys. I'm doing a quick break to let you know that on May 18th, I'll be hosting a new webinar on how to handle volatility in your 40s when you're accumulating and you can see the opportunities and also past 65 when you are retired and withdrawals can be greatly affected by your volatilities. Over the past three years, we run into so many different events that created uncertainties throughout our portfolio and our retirement plan. We got the COVID destroying our economy. We got higher inflation, struggling consumer spending. We got higher interest rates, pushing people to revise their budget. We got the war going on and the debt ceiling for the United States is about to crack. So a lot of things are going on. You may want to sit on the sidelines, but then you're gonna miss a lot of opportunities in you, if you are in the accumulation phase we're going to help you find strategies to stay invested. And if you're retired, well, the withdrawals during those periods are crucial. They can hurt your portfolio and we will provide you with strategies to actually make sure that your portfolio is protected, but you can still withdraw money from it. So the link is right there, dividendstocksrock.com slash volatility. It's 100% free. Webinar will have a full replay and do not miss it. We're going to provide you with a lot of free newsletters, a lot of free tools, stock lists, and so on. So I'm waiting for you on May 18, dividendstocksrock.com slash volatility. See you there. And now back to our show. So with a yield around 1.5%, and 21 consecutive years of dividend increase, you can say that CCL is a low yield, high growth potential stock. And you may wonder, well, if their business model is that dependent on material prices, how can they go through all kinds of recession, like low interest rate, high interest rate, market crisis, and still increase their dividend every time? Well, the secret is diversification. I mean, it's quite obvious. A lot of companies are being able to do that because of that. So when you look at their geographic diversification, it's pretty amazing where less than half of their business model. So 43% of their business is generated in North America. Now they have like one third of their business in Europe and one third in emerging markets. So this is where, how you can see that Whatever happens in Europe, it's not going to affect North America. So they're well diversified. They can grow this way and they also can grow organically because they have a small, uh, a strong presence in emerging markets. Another particularity of their business model is they're not only diversified geographically, but also through various business segments. By serving several types of industries, such as home and personal care, healthcare and specialty, premium food and beverages, and automotive, electronic, consumer goods, they are pretty much everywhere. And this is what I like about CCL is they have a, pun intended, a sticky business. The thing is, it doesn't cost that much to have your packaging, but once you have your packaging, are you really going to change the technology for like the scanning, the labels and so on? No, you're not. I mean, you are a business focusing on 
producing your products, distributing it, so on marketing and so on, getting market shares. So if you have a part of that that is working, so a good packaging, good tubes, whatever, well, then you're gonna keep that part. If it works, that's perfect. If they have to raise their prices, well, you're probably going to pay a little bit more. Why? Because it is a small amount of your total budget. So it's not going to affect your margin that much. And this is how CCL has been able to go through all those materials economic cycles whenever it goes up or goes down and still able to adjust. As you can see in the dividend triangle, if you look back in this video, you'll see that the revenue trend is pretty strong and it's going forward. So they have a good protection against inflation throughout their business model because they, are, they offer a essential product, but at a small cost. So for example, same thing with labels. I'm using some labels here in my office well, I need them and they're not gonna, I mean, even if, it, even if the box costs like 10 bucks instead of $8, I mean, it's a huge increase in percentage, but for me, it's not a big deal and I still need it anyways. So it's not gonna make a difference in my business. I'm still going to continue to, do, to use Avery labels, for example. So this is how they are able to do through geographic diversification and also segment business diversification to be present across the world and produce a lot of different products with high technology, which gives them an edge. And especially being the largest players in many of those area also help them because they gain scales, they gain economies of scales, obviously, and they have like that huge network, a great partnership with a lot of businesses. And this is how they are able to grow moving forward. Also, what I like is from time to time, they make some acquisition. They acquired Avery about 10 years ago, which was a very smart deal. They bought Innovia to go into the polymer banknotes, which are like the best types of like dollar bills that you can create a few years ago as well. So they continue to invest in acquisition with like smart acquisition, like things that were going to add technology to their labels so they can kind of like cross reference and grow a little bit more throughout those business channels. So I recently sold my shares of Enbridge. Yeah, that's going to be discussed in another video to buy CCL Industries a couple of months ago. My DSR members knows about that, about my reason for selling Enbridge and about my reason for buying CCL. Uh, it, had, it happened a few, a few months ago, but I'm very happy to have this stocks in my portfolio. Obviously, it lowers the yield, but it improves the growth potential moving forward. And that's the most important part in this environment. It's the, there's a lot of uncertainties. There's like inflation, high interest rate, the war is still raging. So you might not be sure where to put your money. You might want to sit on the sideline and the best way to avoid paralysis by analysis is to get excited about stocks. That's why I created the rockstar list where I've put together all the great dividend growers that you can find. And then you can start searching across that list. Obviously they're not all great picks. It's not buyer or sell recommendation, but if you're looking for a good starting point to make your research and find great companies like CCL Industries that nobody talks about really. Well, here's you go. You put your email address down in the link below and you're going to receive the list and we update this list every single month. So you're never going to miss an update if you're part of that newsletter. So, all right, people, let me know in the comments if you knew about CCL Industries, if you like that stock or if you have any like other like small company stocks flying on the radar you want me to review. I'll be more than happy to do that. And until next Thursday, don't forget to stay invested.